so I did a quick search there. I think I remember it used to be a community edition of Sugar CRM. Yes. Uh, there's a community edition which is free to download and free to use. So yeah. Yeah. So I don't use really. So yeah. Anyway, uh, so let me try and get my slides up. <laughs> I have too many things. Is recording? <laughs> Cool. <coughs> right, so uh, right, uh, for those of us who have been uh, programming for a while, you might have heard about this this uh, principle. Though for those who are new to this, uh, I will try to introduce a bit more about what it is. Um, it will not be very detailed, it will not be very in-depth, because I feel m many more smarter people on the internet has actually talked about it and has given more great examples about this. So what is SOLID? <coughs> SOLID is basically a, it stands for Single Responsibility Open Close List of Substitution Interface over Interface Segregation and Dependency Inversion. These are essentially um, guidelines that helps you in designing your code. Um, this script it was coined by Michael Feathers and based on the five principles, the first five principles of uh, object-oriented programming and design uh, by Robert C. Martin, or affectionately called Uncle Bob. <laughs> so Uncle Bob wrote, wrote a bunch of books about this, uh, about this, about object-oriented design and programming uh, design, um, and he, he coined a couple of terms and the five, he talked about some basic principles. And uh, Michael Feller felt that it could be summarized and organized into a, a word called solid. Uh, it's basically it's a guideline that helps you in um, designing your code, removing things like code smell, and <coughs> it costs you in a way it's a refactor your code. It helps you in making your code a bit more readable and more extendable. Because as developers we work in a team, we want to make sure our code is readable by our, our fellow developers and we can easily make changes to it. Essentially, the problem we have with legacy code is the cost of change. The cost needed to make changes to your code is, is can be very high if you, your code is not designed properly. It's not designed well, rather. So SOLID is basically, usually and basically a guideline of how you should look at your code as you, as you create it or as you, as you design it or refactor it. So these are some ways you can look at and look at, look at your code that you have right now, how you can reorganize your code and refactor your code. So, <clears throat> yeah, again, single responsibility, open close. Today I'll just be touching on two, the, the first two. It's part one of a three-part series, hopefully. <laughs> so first part will be about single responsibility and the next I'll be talking about open close. So what does the single responsibility principle uh, say? Uh, this is taken from the wiki record, the uh, Wikipedia uh, entry. So every module or class should have a responsibility of its own. Basically, it's, it's over a single part of the, of the of the software, and the responsibility should only be entirely encapsulated in that class or method. Essentially, uh, each class and method or module should only have one job, right? So a class should have only one reason to change, as uh, Uncle Bob says. So all services should be narrowly aligned with that kind of responsibility. So each class, each function, each thing that you do, should only, uh, each module that you create should only do one thing, right? And a class should only be able to be doing one specific, have one specific responsibility. Because when you mix responsibility into, the, into one class, you may end up, have, you may end up writing uh, code which is so intertwined together that it's difficult to, put, to break them apart if the, if the use case changes, right? Here's an example of a of a, of a simple class uh, of shapes. So it's a circle class and a square class. Each of them implements uh, its own uh, uh, specific thing. Like on the circle has a radius, has a constructor, it passes it that in. Uh, same goes for a square, it knows about the length. So square has to know square, right? like length and breadth are the same, right? <coughs> so this, is, this does that. So our application here, is an area calculator. Given uh, a, a, an array of different shapes, calculate the total surface area of all the shapes in, uh, in, in that array. So the array has a circle, has a square, 
and you have also of certain length, but you have a way, you need to have a way of generating and, and summing up the uh, total area of uh, all the shapes. So this is the, the functionality of this particular class here. So you look at it, it, it takes in, in a constructor an array of shapes. There's a function called sum, which basically has some magic logic, which we'll cover later, that brings all of them together. And of course, the third part will be the output. So once I, I instantiate this class, I will say, hey, here's, all, here's an array of squares and, and circles. Give me a total, total area. And so it basically uh, generate a text, a h1, say, you know, this is all the, all the areas to it. It's very simple. Was, my example is kind of contrived. I can actually rip this off some website on the internet just to show you guys. But I'll show you the source later. You can go and look at the, the blog post. So this is how it's implemented. Very simple, an array of shapes of, of radius 2, square of, of, of length 5, square of length 6, pass right into the a new instance of the area, area calculator, which then will echo the output, which will be total size. So that's pretty cool, right? So you look at implementation, what is it doing? It's actually generating you know, strings. So you have you're quite kind of like it's, it's, here's a good example of all each of this function doing a, sep, uh, a, a, a specific thing, one responsibility. What does sum do? Sum basically sums up everything. And output is the one that kind of like outputs the string, right? Pretty simple. So what if you want to say, mm, instead of generating a HTML header, why don't you give me a JSON or XML or, or some J template stuff? So that's where it becomes tricky when you look at this class again. Right, because the presentation layer is somehow quite is somehow intertwined into the output. So in this case, the output only does is doing output is doing one thing, correct? It's, it's showing you the output. But then, if we need to change the use case, so, so here's where the cost of change comes in, right? If you have designed our code in this way, without anticipation of what it could possibly be used for in the future, uh, the cost of making this change to this class later is going to be quite costly in terms of man hours. So one way to we can look at this is to how we have all been doing with things like Laravel model view controller with separation of presentation logic and and the uh, and everything else, right? So we can we can do that by breaking it up into another uh, another class. We have another class that is that just simply does the sum calculated outputter. So basically, that's that this particular class itself is basically uh, doing that presentation layer. This is the first logic is still the same. It goes into the area calculator, but as a result of that object, it becomes a dependency in the next class, which is the sum calculator outputter. And with this outputter class, we can actually implement various methods that generates JSON, Haml, and so on and so forth. Right. So this is kind of like how you break up into different things, like the, the calculation of the area is the domain or the responsibility of the area calculator. And the presentation layer is now brought out into another class called the, called the sum calculator outputter. And this is, do they have an example? Do you have an oh, okay. example how it looks like? Yeah, so essentially that's how we could kind of like break it up into a single responsibility per class rather than, uh, so you can go back to your code and let you, you know, some legacy code you've done in the past. You can look at it and say, what have I been doing? You know, sometimes you can do. You can ask yourself a simple question: How many things is this function doing? How many things is this class doing? Right. So that little simple question can help you understand and maybe break it up into small things. And of course, the next next problem you have will be: What do I name the functions or the class? One of the few things that are difficult in computer science. <laughs> Naming things and off by one. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and caching. Never mind. <laughs> right, so open close principle. Any questions about single responsibility principle? Um, have you do you guys kind of have a, have a general understanding? Okay. So next thing. Uh, S we have covered S and O is open and like open close principle. What does that mean? It means that um, your software, software entities should be open to extension and close to modification. Open to extension as in we should be able to extend any class uh, through inheritance or through um, become making it a part of another uh, function, uh, another, another a dependency in another in another class, 
and it should be close to modification. Basically, if you design your, your class in a way that is doing only one thing, you can have a mixture of these classes put together and you can have different functionalities coming out of it. Right? So that's where so when you so you want your classes to remain unchanged as much as you can. And that's where you need to uh, think about how you should design your this will, this will be quite instructive how you should design your classes. So class should be extendable without modifi modifying the class itself. I know it's really hard, it's not easy. Um, I've, I've tried this. <laughs> I look at a code that I just written, I just look and I look at it again another day and like, oh, I should have really, sh I really shouldn't be doing this here. <laughs> it's really pretty um, Yeah, because sometimes you write, once you finish your code, you could, if you have time, which is a luxury, you have time, you can think about, so how would this code be used by others in the future? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so that'll be the questions you can kind of get to start you thinking. Um, right, so you can mix classes by inheritance or dependency injection. It's basically to create new behaviors. Um, so let's go back to our example. So here we are basically showing you an example. Already the, the earlier example didn't show uh, any, any, I didn't implement the sum. So here's the sum, uh, uh, sum implementation written by somebody. So right, what is it doing right now in the sum uh, remember the function we had earlier, the area calculator takes in an, an array of shapes, and this and this dot, this shapes is basically passing that in, and every single time is actually checking for a square. Are you a square? Oh, yeah, I do this. Are you a circle? Yeah, I do this. So there's a if else kind of matrix. And why it means an oval yeah. or a trapezoid? Hmm. Yeah. So which means we have to start modifying this code to add more. Cases. Okay, say ah, very simple lah. We just change to the switch class. A bit of switch function. This is easy lah. Switch lah. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah. So which means your code could potentially grow in this piece of code here right now. It could potentially grow and grow and grow. So, um, is this a good way of doing things? You guys think no? Okay. I'm glad you guys you guys agree it's not good. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's take one step back and say look at our code again. Say hmm, area area is. Should the shape should add, isn't the, the the idea of an area something that only is a responsibility of the shape itself, a shape class, a shape type, right? Should kind of like maybe you should implement some. It should know about its own dimensions. It knows about its own attributes. So you could easily implement some form of. It should know about things like uh, its own area, right? So this is here's how we could kind of refactor this and say let's go back to our square class and say huh. You should actually you should know about how how big you are. You should know about your surface area. So let's implement a new method called area, right? And which in this case will come out the area of this of the square. And once it knows that, you can then pass it in. And in every time we you basically instead of asking that question in the uh, area doing that calculation in the area calculator, we're actually basically asking the shape to tell us that information. Hey shape, what is your area? Then we have that information. <laughs> we can also take this step one step further because we know that there could be some, um, there could be new shapes that we could create in the future. We could create a trapezoid, a pentagram, a pen, penta, um, pentagram, and uh, many other shapes, oval and all that stuff. So all these things, they should probably all use the same. Um, interface. They should all implement the sh the the, sh the area um, uh, attribute, right? Should all be implementing the area attribute. So how do we enforce this? The way that we the way that we enforce this is to use a why did the own projector turn off? So my press off button. Okay, it's good a while. So yeah, you, you understand, right? So um, so interface. Uh, so instead of um, instead of actually checking every single class that you create, we kind of use a, a programmatic way of enforcing that you must implement a uh, uh, area function. Right, so using an interface class is basically telling you you should actually do that. Um, 
Let's give it a while. Right, so but it still requires a programmer to actually implement the shape. So it's like it just like we have a new we create a new shape, it must shape must implement um, shape interface. But what if some programmers uh, in our team are quite new to the team? They haven't actually learned about the, the you have to use the word interface. Uh, you, you implement this particular interface. Why if you have someone in your team that has doesn't know about that? So which means you have to do the other thing, which is to code defensively. Right, so basically write some code later on. Yeah, just for me. Let's try this again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. It's okay. Right, so uh yeah, so once again we have the, the shape interface. The shape interface the shape interface. Uh, now the circle and square should both in, should both implement the shape interface, and it that kind of means that you must because the way that we derive the area it differs from shape to shape, so which we, which means we have to implement this in each, each of our shape, and the interface will be found and ensure that we actually use this. If we miss it out or we create a we implement we create a new shape without uh you, without declaring a area function, the it should basically break. It should basically cause an exception somewhere, right? And the code defensively is to basically help us, help us ensure that uh, in the future, if anyone else uh, accidentally create a new shape without implementing the interface, uh, this defensive piece of code over here will basically should make sure that are you a shape interface? Do you implement a shape interface? Interface. If you don't, I will throw an error or I'll scream bloody hell, you know. The good thing about this is also it'll be it's very cool that in the future, or if you in the future you need to, oh right, instead of uh, show, I also need to implement something new like say how much it costs to buy that shape, for example, you can implementing a uh, shopping cart and you want to be able to come up with, uh, you want to say the price, you get the price of each of the shape, is a contrived example, but come uh, bear me on that. So how do you, how do we extend this? How do we extend this without making any changes? Well, we could actually, you know, go go there add a more interface function and say the price, and which means you can go down to all your implementations and, and add the price function, right? So it's kind of like helping you defensively fix this. Um, and of course, after if it doesn't implement the shape uh, interface, we will throw in a, an exception. Which is a rather long exception name. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write this. <laughs> yes, story from the internet. <laughs> the internet is never wrong. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so um, coding defensively. Uh, that was actually, that's actually all, all that I have. So, uh, once again, to recap, we, we talk about uh, single responsibility. And then we just, we just talked about um, open and open close principle, right? Um, I'm supposed to talk about this, probably we will be continue in the next next round. Uh, okay. And here are the references. You want to read more about this? The blog post where I stole all the code samples from. Um, yeah. So yeah, I can take a picture. Yep. Cool. So right now, questions. Any questions for me? Yes. Let's say we have a set of requirements that allows that uh, uh, makes us establish a class for all the interfaces, and uh, that means the necessary functions that must exist was the uh, subclass kind of thing. What happens when? Uh, changes. So do we have to refactor the parent class? Like take away like perhaps it used you, to you're talking about abstract class or interface class? Um, class. I would say abstract classes. Yeah. Because abstract classes it's actually um correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't I've been doing I'm, I've not been doing PHP for a bit too long, so I keep forgetting what the difference between interface and abstract. Abstract, so, abstract, abstract class, class is a class that uh, has it cannot be you cannot be instantiated 
but it implements the interface. Right. So all the other classes will so-called extend the abstract class. Right. Oh, right. I have one comment. Yeah, you are very careful yes. about single whether multiple inheritance are accepted. Uh, if it's not that, it only PHP doesn't have multiple inheritance. Right? Uh, no, only single inheritance. Single inheritance. Yeah. Okay. Then um, you yeah. have a problem that you might prefer to play on prefer using inheritance rather over yeah. the shared classes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I would, but inheritance only makes sense if the way that we derive the area is the same. But in this case, the the, the way it, if it's if the way that we derive the the implementation of area is, is different for each shape, right? So there's no way we can do an inheritance in this case. But if we know that the price will always be the same for all of them, we can make it inherit a, a parent class which has a price uh, method, for example. If we know that the price for all the shapes are the same, make, just make them all. Uh, inherit, um, extend from a, a, a class which has a common uh, method. I can't remember, is abstract class actually? No, abstract class can instantiate it, but you, you can no, uh, have... Abstract class, right, some parts, yeah, some parts, it's just that maybe at, at least one of the functions with yeah. abstract, there's no implementation. Right. Yeah. So, 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 so to interface, uh, interface every, every function, <coughs> Will be abstract. Okay. Interface is like a contractor. Yeah. Abstract yeah. implementation functional. Yes. yes. Uh, but, ah. it, but composition is favored to inheritance uh, because uh, once you go down to say, uh, you have grandchildren classes, then after that you uh, you have a nightmare. This uh, you have an abstract class that implements this interface. Then A extend. Uh, abstract class B extend A, C extend B, then after that it's going to be nightmare. Um, <laughs> I, I'm in favor of I'm in favor of base class. If you can implement a base class, I'm in favor of that. Um, I think in PHP 5. Point something they introduce traits. Ah, yeah. Traits is also another thing you can use in, in extending functionality. So traits will be a small chunk of code that has only a certain responsibility. And you can make you can add the traits to the to each of the class that go, they requires that that additional functionality. Yes. Yeah, but for me, traits uh, uh, is bad because it, it break, uh, it's it's like virtual uh, inheritance. So virtual inheritance. But uh, you, you you can do that with composition uh, and independent injection. So so because with traits you you, you could have a class with. Uh, Several and I, I think it's a bad yeah. I tried a bit of traits. Uh, the thing is, uh, you, you can't really is you think carefully. Is that like you can't really modify. Let's say the signature. Let's say I have a method that takes in two arguments. So let's say when I use it in another class, right, I want to change the type of the arguments or change the three arguments. Right, uh, there will be some. It's a bit problematic. Uh. Can't you override? You can, uh, you can override the. Uh, I, I know for sure not the when I was trying it. it seems yeah. that yeah. <laughs> I go, I hey, anyway, new fango stuff used judiciously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of still kind of old fashioned that way. <laughs> yeah. Um. Again, if you use any of that, just be careful about using it. Remember about single responsibility. You just, maybe if you're doing that, you're adding traits into your class. It could be an indication that your class might be doing a bit too much. Right, you might want to think about maybe implementing a different class and having a way of merging or, or compositionally uh, combining them together in some other uh, some other class or some other way to go to get the um, functionality that you need, rather than extending it or adding new stuff to it. Maybe it's about time to break it up into smaller classes to think about how you could use them compositionally to get the results that you want. Right, it all this boils down to. Yeah. Code, code design and experience. Uh, yeah. I need yep. more comment. Yeah, a way that can you tell how long your code, your class century is. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. You really want to go to that level? <laughs> I can. You don't, you don't need to say, you don't need to re read, but you can tell how long the length of the class is too long, then something <laughs> might be You really want to go long. down the level? Okay, fine, I'll down to that level. <laughs> I shall. Ooh, oh, oh dear. Oh boy. What was the keyword? Solid. Right. This is a bunch of guidelines uh, written by 
<coughs> prepared by Sandy Metz in the Ruby world and Smalltalk world. But I'll just show it here. So some uh, or rules lah, you know, rules. And these are the rules. Ah, oh, hundred times. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So I wouldn't say it's bad. I'm just thinking that it could be a way where that you can enforce certain programming um, standards in your team. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend this totally. It's just a guideline. But it's a very interesting way of helping you think about how. Uh, okay, so it's like if your class is above hundred lines of code, which means you got screw a little bit too much, right? It's an indication that maybe your class is doing a bit too much. Um, if your methods are more than five lines, it's also maybe an indication that it might be doing a bit too much. Um, okay, I'll, 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 this is a, this is applied in the Ruby world, so I would I would actually um, maybe. Maybe a factor of two but, of this. But, uh, no, but, I think uh, five lines per method would be uh, too much. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's like you're probably using this. For, for, for PHP, right? Uh, yeah, really uh, really core something. methods is a bit more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so if you keep breaking out into too many methods, uh, optimization. <laughs> we are talking about optimization versus readability, uh, right? So, yeah, 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 that's right. So four params per method. Uh, one is instant variable per Rails view. This is actually what it looks like. It's, a, it's in the Ruby <laughs> world, right? So for like. Maybe this will doesn't apply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and two two class two, two, two class names for okay this again these are real conventions but yeah um but look at the first three <laughs> yeah so um yeah these are simple rules because you know do when you again when your class gets a bit too big it might be an indication that you're doing too much in that class you know, so, so you might think about breaking it up. Uh, if you're more than five lines or ten lines, maybe it also might be an indication when you're doing too much. Again, these are guidelines, but it's more like from based on this, you can look at your, your code again and say, are you doing too much? Yeah, are you doing more than one thing? Um, yeah, sometimes having more classes is actually a bad thing. Okay, <laughs> Yeah. One question. Uh. Well, it's quite quite easy to find code. Right? It's about your your that that boils down to your proficiency with your with your coding tool, right? If you're using PHP Storm, it's very easy to do fuzzy search and find files. Even with Sublime Text, it's very easy to find files that you need, right? Yeah. Uh, if you're using PHP Storm, you just command click go to the class there. It's about proficiency in your in your in your your weapon of choice, right? Which is a whole other topic altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, just now you mentioned the uh, close for modification. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you mentioned Ruby. Uh. Uh, I know Ruby has this uh, feature where your class is already defined in one class with it. And after that, you can so called like, so -called modify the class outside, right? something like that. You, you, you call it mix in or something like that. Mix it, yeah, mix it. Ah. But mix it is very much like traits. Yeah. So traits some like traits. Ah, okay. Yeah. So mix in in Ruby is very much like trace in PHP. So yeah, which is how you modify the behavior of code. So yeah, okay. One yes. of the purpose of uh, open source principle is uh, when you use uh, you know, uh, this very dense, uh, we use uh, um, uh, dependency manager, uh, uh, library manager, and, and when we use uh, we use uh, all other library tools. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when that library uh, has one well method, uh, and with respect to that open source, we, we can easily uh, extend uh, that functionality mm -hmm. uh, without the adoption of uh, this code. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's also one of the main purposes of this code. Dependency injection. Fancy metric. Okay. This is in Symphony, right? Or, or is there something else? Uh, all the famous have dependency uh, injection managers. Uh, yeah, I haven't done PHP in a while. <laughs> uh, my age is showing. <laughs> yeah, but um, thanks. So, uh, any more questions about or comments or refu refutations or you feel that I've not done enough justice to these topics? <laughs> my last one. Um, about the uh, yep. uh, code, uh, code uh, the function, 
defensive coding. Defensive coding, ya. Oke. Why uh, why do you uh, do uh, that? Uh, and and not in the consumer because uh, hmm. they are uh, with a with a loop. Uh, There's a school of thought that says constructor should be lightweight. You shouldn't do too many things in the constructor. Yeah. Right. The validation. Uh, this is uh, what you're what talking about. Is uh, what we're doing here is a kind of validation, which I may even of I may even want to say the validation of this thing should be done in a different function. Right. Right now, it's it's going defensively. Yes, but there should be a validation that maybe happens above this before the for each. You should actually do a validation for all the uh, the the. Classes or the or the objects we passed it because actually for his calculator, this constructor is taking in an array of uh, shapes. Mm -hmm. So in order for for PHP like you can't we don't really have a, a type array. So in order for you to validate, you need to go through a loop. So you must not do it here. If it's like passing in one object like a shape collection class X that contains a uh, then the compiler will actually catch it. Yeah, so cool. not compiler. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Right. Yeah, but it's a good point. Uh, and uh, and now with the HP fiber, we can um, uh, type of uh, seven uh, yeah the injection in fiber also. With oh, for for classes, then for PHP seven, you can uh, type in the uh, the scalar type yeah. string int. In the uh, constructor, uh, or the uh, yeah, for for your for, for, for your arguments. Yeah. But if it's a ray, how do you can you check the contents of the ray? No, cannot, 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 cannot. Okay, fine. Uh, unless you have a collection uh, class, uh, so that's another. SPL? No, wait. <laughs> Let's not go there. That's a good idea. Then you can put the validation stuff inside the collection class. Uh, so yeah. Implement the traversable inside. Right. And make it implement like the iterator class or something. Correct. Traversable, traversable, yeah. Right. So what you're saying is instead of uh, using Take of uh, this cap is a uh, constructor taking in an array of shapes. Uh, we should make it uh, another kind of class, which is a collection class, which could have then implement its own validation inside when you add a, sh a shape to it, right? So you know, add shape and in the add the add function of into that collection will actually do a validation. That would be a good thing. Uh, that's actually a good design pattern to go for, which is uh, if you look at my video in the last in few meetups ago, I talk about a primitive obsession. Right, so it's about not dealing, not not have not don't stop stop passing arrays around, but look at how you can use uh, an actual class which, could, which has uh, functionalities to uh, get into it. And it's going low bad. <laughs> oh my god! The mine is okay. It's fine. I got. I got have time. All right. Uh, are we done? I think I'm. Done. I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done. So, uh, what do you guys think? You, did I give a good enough exposition about uh, the the first two alphabets of, of solid? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll be called uh, uh, talking about the other three stuff uh, soon. Uh, before I, uh, there's one more speaker, Pasindu. He's to be sharing with us a little bit about something. He's saying he needs what ten minutes.